Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this new tutorial series we're creating a Django and React dashboard app. And over the course of the next few videos we will make sure that we have data in our database and that we can visualize it in multiple different chart types to provide our users with different kinds of insights. This is the second video in this series. In the first video, we've already set up our Python Django backend. And in this video, we're going to continue and set up our React.js frontend. And by the end of this video, we'll be able to start up our frontend and it will look something like this. And to realize this, we're going to be following five steps. We're going to start by installing Node.js, which is going to help us with handling JavaScript on our computer. Next, we're going to use a package called Vit to create a React front-end project. And Vit is going to take care of all of the configuration and setup for us. Then we're going to start our front-end server and see if everything works the way that we expect. Once that is complete, we also need to make sure that our front-end can communicate with our back-end. To help us with that, we're going to install a package in our back-end called Django Course Headers. And once that is complete, we can whitelist our front-end URL in our backend settings. So the first step is actually installing Node.js. And I think if you've worked with JavaScript before, you already have this on your computer. But if you don't, then you can go to nodejs.org and install it from here. Now, Node.js is going to help us with running JavaScript code on our computer. And we can simply install it by clicking download Node.js. We can then open the installation file right here. And that will make sure that we get a setup wizard for the Node.js package. Now in here, we don't need to do anything that special. We need to accept the terms in the license agreement and then click on next. And also pick a destination of where the files are going to be stored. And in this custom setup, you can change the way that it's gonna be installed, but we actually don't want to make any changes to the default. So we're just gonna click on next. Now here it's going to ask us for tools for native modules but also we're just gonna go with the default and click on next as well. And then we're gonna click install to start the installation. And you can see that the setup has now been completed and we can click finish to end this. And that is our first step done. Now, after you've installed Node.js, make sure to restart your computer. And the reason for that is that Node.js actually populates one of your environment variables and your computer will only recognize new environment variables after it's been restarted. So if you've just installed this, make sure to restart your computer and then you should be completely fine. Now to create a React application, we're going to be using Vit. And Vit is a package that automatically sets up and configures a React.js application by simply executing a few commands. Now the documentation is listed under vjs.dev and on there we're going to click get started. Now in here is going to provide you a lot of information on how you can actually get started. And it also shows you what different types of applications that you can create by using Vit. And you can see that it's not exclusively for React. You can also use it for different JavaScript libraries, such as vanilla, Vue, Preact, Lit, Svelte, Solid, and Quick. And next to that, it's not only JavaScript, but also supporting TypeScript. So there are a lot of different options for configuring your application. Now, when we take a look at a documentation, uh, creating our first Vite project is actually really easy. We can simply use the command npm create Vite at latest. So I'm going to copy over this code right here. So we are back in our code and we're gonna open up a new terminal right here. And we're gonna make sure that that terminal is in the highest level of our project. So it needs to be in the overall folder of the project because that's where we want to create a new module for our front-end project. Now in here, we're going to paste the command from the Vit site, which is npm create Vit at latest. Now the first question that is going to ask me if I want to install the package called create Vit, and that is going to be used to create our project. So I'm going to type in a Y to make sure that it knows that we want to install that. Next, it's going to ask it my project name. Now we've called our backend project backend. So to be consistent, I'm going to call my frontend project frontend. Now as a next step is going to ask us what framework we want to use to build our application. And this is the same list that we saw on the documentation. Now in this case, we are building a React application. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to select React. 
Now after that, it's going to ask us to select a variant. And you can see a clear pick between TypeScript and JavaScript. But in this case, we are going to be using JavaScript because that's the language that I prefer to create my React apps. But even within JavaScript, there are two options that we can pick. We have the regular JavaScript option, and then we have JavaScript plus SWC. Now let's briefly explain what those two options mean. The first option of JavaScript compiles your project using Babel. And that is a package that can compile your JavaScript code and make sure that it runs on your computer. Now, the other option uses a different way to compile your application, and that is called Speedy Web Compiler, or SWC. Now, in the documentation, Veet states that SWC has a few advantages and actually results in a better performance. Uh, so it's better suited for bigger applications. So based on them mentioning that SWC has the best performance, that's the one we're going to be picking. So we're going to navigate to that option and then click on enter. All right, and we can now see that a new folder has been created inside of our main directory called frontend. And in there we find the different files that together make up our React.js application. Now it states that we still need to do a few things right here. We need to CD into our frontend, then do npm install, and then we can run our application by doing npm run dev. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to CD into frontend. Then we're gonna do npm install, which is going to make sure that everything we need is going to be installed into our project. Now the npm install has just completed and you can see that we have a few warnings of deprecated packages. And the reason that you see this is that something that Veed is using is using other dependencies which are no longer updated. Now I've read up on this deprecated warning and it turns out that this can happen more often and that it's nothing to worry about at the moment because these packages are rarely being even used. So this should be nothing to worry about and it's not gonna have any impact on our project. So the last thing that it wants us to do is actually start our server and we can do that by typing in npm run dev. And this should start the localhost server. And you can see that our application of our frontend is now available on the localhost 5173. And when we open it, you can now see that we have our application live on our local computer, uh, stating Vite plus React. And we also have a nice counter, which already works. Now it's nice that we have our frontend now working and the code between our frontend and backend being split into two different folders but we still have not done anything to make sure that our frontend can actually communicate with our backend. Because as far as Django is concerned, our frontend cannot even communicate with our backend right now. And that is of course due to security. Now to make sure that we can let our frontend make requests to our backend, we can use a package called Django course headers to whitelist our frontend. You can already see it on the documentation right here that this package is going to help us with the cross origin resource sharing uh, and it's going to make sure that we can make requests from our frontend to our backend. Now to install this, we can copy the command of pip install Django course headers, and we're gonna go back into our project and open a new terminal. If you remember from the previous video, we need to do a few things before we can actually start working in this terminal. We need to CD into our backend, and then we also need to activate our virtual environment by doing venv slash scripts slash activate. And now that we are inside of our virtual environment, we can actually do python-m and then pip install Django course headers. And you can see that we've now successfully installed Django course headers inside of our project. Now, if we go back to the documentation, we need to make a few changes to our settings to make sure that this will work the way that we expect. The first thing that we need to do is we need to include course headers into the installed apps of our settings.py file. So we're gonna to go to our backend and then to our dashboard folder, because that's where our settings.py file is. And inside of this file, we're going to make a small change to the installed apps, where we're going to add the course headers to our list. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the middleware for course headers mentioned in our settings.py file as well. So we're gonna copy over the middleware for course headers and we're going to place it above the common middleware, similarly as the documentation. So back in our settings.py file, and you can see that we have the common middleware right there. So underneath that, I'm just going to paste in course headers.middleware.course middleware. 
Now, as a last step, we actually need to configure what URLs can have access and make requests to our backend. Now, there are a few different ways that we can do that. We can use course allowed origins and simply specify a list of the domains that can have access to our backend. Next, we can also do it with creating a regular expression, which is a little bit more complex. We can also say that everyone can have access to our backend. And then there are also a bunch of other settings that are possible to set in the settings. Now, what we're going to be using is the course allowed origins. And in there, we can simply specify the URL of our frontend, and then the communication between frontend and backend should be all good. So I'm going to copy over the course allowed origins, and inside of our project, we're going to put that setting in. And in this case, I'm just going to put it underneath my database. Now, these URLs currently don't mean anything uh, to me, so I'm going to delete those right here. And you can see already in our front end terminal that this is the one that we need to whitelist because the requests are going to come from our local host 5173 because that's where our front end is located. So I'm going to copy over this URL right here and then put it in the course allowed origins so that our application knows that this one can make requests to our backend. And we're going to close that off with a comma and let's save our file. And that is actually all that we're going to be doing for today. In this video, I showed you how we can set up our React.js frontend by using Vite. In the next video, we're going to continue and I'm going to show you how we can create different pages in our frontend and do page navigation with React Router DOM. And after that, we're going to continue even further by creating a navigation menu and also creating a model in our backend that is going to contain the data that we want to visualize in our dashboard. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.